Welcome to Fast Fix Monday. My name is Jeremy Stretton and I'm a founder at the Business Legal Lifecycle. So today's topic is about leasing. So anyone who watched um, our episode last week on Wednesday would know that uh, we were talking about leasing and insurance. Um, today's topic is the top three mistakes business owners make when leasing premises. Now we picked the top three. Uh, there's probably you know, scope to do many, many more than that uh, because there's lots of mistakes that people make when they're leasing premises. But today is just the top three. So um, I'll go through those now. So the first one is not making sure that everything that that's promised or discussed in the lease document, in the lease negotiations, is in the lease document. Now, what do I mean by that? Often, when you're negotiating a lease, there might be things like um, zoning. Uh, questions. So uh, whether or not you're allowed to zone, uh, use the premises that you're looking at leasing with the correct zonage. Having a discussion with the landlord about that before you enter into the lease and making sure that you get the right approval in place is critical to making sure that you have the right lease. Signage is another point. Uh, often people when they negotiate a lease will have ideas in their mind about where they want to put signage over here or over there and they won't think about exactly what the fact that they need to negotiate that with their the landlord there's other things as well that don't go into lease documents that really should uh, these are things like uh, promises that are made negotiations that are made between the parties so often a landlord will make certain promises to you to go into a lease now i'm not saying that they're going to deliberately do the wrong thing but Sometimes people misunderstand um, other people's intentions or other people's meaning. If you don't document what goes into a lease properly, then you can have a lot of problems with the lease down the track. One document that's become very popular, especially in the last few years, is what we call a deed as to representations. And the idea of that document is to basically stop this exact issue. And that's to have a idea about what promises the tenant says were made to them to get them into the lease. Now, as a solicitor acting for a landlord, of course, that's a great document because you get to protect your landlord uh, quite well um, if the tenant um, says later on that they should have been promised something. So that's the first thing, making sure that everything that's discussed and promised is within the lease document. The next thing is not understanding the lease document. So what do I mean by that? So many people come to us having entered into a lease maybe three, four, five, ten 10 years prior and they don't actually know what the lease says. Now, reading a lease is a difficult thing at, at the best of times. It's a complicated legal document. It'll have a lot of legal jargon in there um, and a lot of wording, especially the older leases, that really you might read that and go, what does that mean? I don't have any idea what that means. I, I don't know what's actually going on. And what we've found is that you need to actually read the document, ask questions. The only, um, only problem that people have is when they don't read something and understand something. It's actually very common. Um, and I'll give an example from a lease that I've, a couple of leases that I've dealt with just recently. Um, and that's the difference um, that people didn't understand between a deposit and a bond. Now, a deposit is an amount that you put in place to secure the premises. And that might be a two or three month uh, prepayment of the rent going forward. Now. Um, a lot of people think that's a bond. Well, it's not. A bond is an amount that's held by a landlord to secure the lease for a period of time. Now, if you read the lease clauses properly, you'll notice that there's a, that, that, that distinction is in there. Now, I don't deny that there are confusing leases. That's why you go and get legal advice. Whether you, you, know, whether you go to a, a, a your, your um, solicitor that you've acted for, has acted for you for many years, or you come to another lawyer, make sure that you're talking to someone who knows what they're talking about and ask questions. Read the document and ask lots of questions. So that's number two. The third one is not understanding the expenses that you have to pay. A typical commercial lease is probably 20 to 30 pages thick. Uh, it has a lot of terminology in there that may be confusing. Um, and you need to make sure that what you're entering into, you're able to pay. So things like rent, obviously you're gonna um, have, have a rental to pay for your lease. Secondly, uh, you'll have a um, potentially outgoings. So outgoings are things like rates, land tax, repair costs, all these kind of things that go into the expenses that the landlord has to pay and they want you to pay as part of the lease. Uh, other things like costs on, on um, any negotiations that are during the lease. 
costs on who's going to do a survey plan. If you have a lease that's of a part of a premises and you want that lease registered in Queensland anyway, and I know a lot of other states in Australia, there's a requirement that you have to have a certain lease plan that meets a certain standard. If that standard isn't high enough, then the lease can't be registered and often a landlord will make it the responsibility of the tenant to pay the costs of that lease. So you can see that not understanding those costs is, can, can end up costing you a lot more. Things like fit outs. If there's going to be a fit out done on the premises, who's paying for it? What if the landlord's promised to you that they're going to do a fit out or to undertake certain works, what is the extent of that? Properly defining all those items and understanding all those items is critical when you're entering into a lease. And you can see also how the third one actually goes into the second one, which is understanding the lease document. Understanding what you're signing will give you a lot more clarity. So look, that's it from me from Fast Fix Monday. I'm Jeremy Stretton, as I said before. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching this. We'll be back on Wednesday uh, to do our talk um, on financials. So we're gonna go through uh, what are the financials that you should have for a business as a bare minimum and, and a bit of extra on top of that. And also financing. So if you need to borrow money to finance your business, then what do you need to finance that business? So look, thank you very much for watching this episode of Fast Six Monday and I'll see you on Wednesday.